All right, he is an attorney, former lobbyist, and most of us know him as the former U.S. representative for Florida's 13th Congressional District, Pinellas County, and the predecessor of Congressman Bill Young, the man he considered his mentor. We're talking, of course, about David Jolly. He ultimately took Young's seat, but then unseated last year by former Governor Charlie Crist, and now the former congressman has become a prominent Republican critic of the president. He is here with us this morning. Good morning to you. Great to be with you. Yeah, thank you very much. It seems that you've been making the rounds on the cable networks lately, openly sure. criticizing the president, saying, quote, the purveyor of fake news resides in the Oval Office and right, that the president right. needs to stop complaining and do his job. That's right. Do you think that he does not have uh, what it takes to run the federal government because he's never held a political office before? And look, he's learning on the job. And, and any objective person would say this has been a tough 75 days for President Trump. Look, very importantly, I'm not a never-Trumper. I recognize him as the President of the United States, and frankly, I would like to see him succeed. We are a stronger nation when the President is successful. But between the travel ban failure, the health care rollout, the Russia investigation that he really ignited with a tweet on a Saturday morning, this has been a poor 75 days that has led us to an unpopular president with credibility problems. And when it matters is events like this week when we have Syria and that we now have a commander in chief that frankly needs the unity of the American people. I, and I was going to talk about Syria. Uh, you know, the president ordered the airstrike sure. on Syria. That was Thursday night. Uh, and this is really a radical shift in his position on Syria. In fact, he warned then President uh, Barack Obama back in 2013 not to take he military did. action, which is exactly the opposite exactly of what, what he, he did. did. So right. was this a smart move, do you believe? I think it was. And, and listen, you acknowledge rightfully a credibility issue here. I mean, Donald Trump is somebody who switches positions pretty regularly. Uh, but as a matter of national security and as a matter of the leader of the free world, if you will, did he do the right thing to say to Assad, you will not use chemical weapons on your own people. Listen, Barack Obama in 2013 drew a red line. Assad crossed it. At that point, 400 children died and Barack Obama stepped back and really did nothing. So I do think Donald Trump made the right decision. The question is, where does this go? Was this a one-time signal to, to Assad to say, no use of chemical weapons, but we'll stay out of the Civil War? Or was this an escalation of U.S. interest in the country? And then you bring in the complexity of what does that mean for Russia? That's what well. I was going to ask you. The, uh, how does this affect Russia and Syria's close relationship and then the relationship with Russia and the U.S.? This is really the complication, right? So there is the civil war and how do you defeat ISIS but also confront a regime like Assad that uses chemical weapons? But Russia has chosen sides and frankly, I believe in the vacuum that President Obama created it allowed Putin to come in as the strong man. You know, earlier in the day before the strikes, the Russian spokesperson came out and said that their support for Syria was not unequivocal. And that in some ways was a diplomatic signal that perhaps one strike might be okay. Mm -hmm. But then you saw Putin come out immediately afterwards and say Trump shouldn't have done this. So clearly, though they de-conflicted between the U.S. and Russia before the strike, there is no uh, consensus on this. This is why this issue is tricky, not just because of Assad, but because of Russia. The reason North Korea is tricky is not just because of North Korea, but because of China. If there were easy answers, past presidents would have solved this. There are no easier answers and today. And that's the thing. We have all these issues sure. with such large countries going on right now, right. and the, the president does not have the political experience. Where not. will this lead? He does not. And look, my criticism of the first 75 days was he surrounded himself by a political team in the White House, Kellyanne Conway, Steve Bannon. Those who brought political leadership but no experience. He needs to surround himself by General Mattis, by General Kelly, by Secretary Tillerson. Let the adults in the room make diplomatic decisions based on their subject matter expertise that, frankly, the president doesn't have. The president's a deal maker. Let him make the final decisions. He's earned that because he is the president of the United States. But trust your advisors. Okay. So, uh, another criticism that you made is of GS, uh, G, uh, GOP congressman charging that, uh, quote, Republicans in Congress have proven to be weaker under Republican President That's Trump right. than they ever were under That's Democrat right. President Barack Obama. So to me, are you saying that Republicans need to stand up more to the president? I think they do. Yes, stand up where we have fought for policies for years. You know, members of Congress were still elected based on what they ran on 
not just on what the president ran on. Frankly, many members of Congress were elected on a separate platform than the president. And so if the president's offering either policies that conflict with Republican principles, or frankly, if he is making statements that dishonor the traditional principles of the body politic and the greatness of the country, Republicans need to stand up. Because listen, Republicans were happy to stand up and cry foul against President Obama and the Democrats stayed silent. We've seen a reversal of that now. All right, final question this morning. We move back here home, right. Pinellas County, 13th right. Congressional District. <laughs> right. uh, there are rumors out there right now that you may try to get your old seat back. Fact, fiction, what? Uh, I will make a decision next January. Honestly, campaign finance comes into play. Uh, my opponent, if I were to be in the race, Charlie Chris, will raise two or three million dollars. I'm not going to do that. So then, why put That's yourself out over the, the, the TV news networks? The because cable networks I, right I still now. have a lot to contribute to the direction of the party and the country, and uh, I want to make sure that the right voices are heard and that, frankly, the inside voices don't dominate. So you will come here and tell us if you <laughs> choose to or not, and you will do you it here it. first. You All got right. it. Wait till next January. All right. Former Congressman David yeah. Jolly, thank you so much Great for being here. Really Paul. appreciate it this you morning. Bet. Thanks.